Now to reassemble all of this, of course, you need to lubricate the parts that you're going to lubricate. Of course, be all your springs, any place that metal touches metal. I'm not going to go over all that with you, I'm just going to do the assembly. We'll start with the main spring housing. Main spring housing pin and the main, spin, main spring housing plunger. Goes down into the top of it. Now if you have a little vise to put this in, this works a whole lot better. But this will still work. Your main spring retaining pin looks like a nail. It's got a little head on one side. That head goes on the inside of the main spring housing. With an appropriately sized pin, push that main spring down as far as it'll go. And that pin will just push right in with your finger. And it's the tension of the spring that holds that in place. Next thing we'll do is the magazine release. Take the magazine release plunger, the screw with the spring on it. Insert it into the magazine release and use your small screwdriver. Push in on that to line it up with the cutout or rotate it into the cutout. And you can release it. Alright, reassembly. Start with the lower receiver and the trigger. The trigger, the bone on the trigger, favors the top half of the trigger. So whichever side it's closest to, that's up on the trigger. Also this slant, slants back. So those two tracks inside the lower receiver, going in trigger first, the bone of the trigger slides right into those tracks. Take your magazine release, slide it back into the hole, it's completely flush. Take your screwdriver, you're going to push up on this just a little bit while you turn it with the screwdriver. When it gets into position, it's going to go into the cutout that it fits into and then snap back out of your fingers. Just like that. Now that's in place and your trigger's in place. Alright, this next part works really well if you've got a pair of needle nose pliers. This is the trigger disconnect. Flip it over so it's facing kind of up. It'll be in the position you're going to look to see it if it's in the gun. On the side here, there's two little tabs. Those are the bottom. Now the little triangle that points up is up. So lay it down just like that. Take the sear and on the bottom here, you're going to lay it right over the top of this. So with the hook facing towards the top, and the tabs on the bottom of the sear are going to line up with the tabs on the bottom of the disconnect. So it right over the top, just like that, until it's fully seated. Now, the top of the sear, or the correction, the top of the disconnect, this little round piece, is going to fit into the round hole on the top of your frame. This is where it's nice to have needle nose pliers. It's not required, but it makes it a lot easier. Use your pliers and grab the disconnect right below where the sear connects. Okay, slide it into the frame, pushing it up through that hole. So it's going to come up through that hole and then it'll just lay in there on top of the trigger bar, trigger bone. It'll set right on top of the back of the trigger bone. Okay. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your sear pin, which is the smaller of those two pins, and going from the left, that might even have a little head on it like a nail, going from the left, push that in through the sear and the disconnect. Just wiggle it around a little bit and those parts should line up and allow you to push that all the way through. Now. You don't want to go completely through. You don't want to go completely through. You want to stop right when it comes all the way through. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take this Series 80 part and put it in there. When you're putting this in the gun, the smaller of those two fingers faces up and back, and this sear pin goes through that hole 
with that facing towards the top of the gun and towards the back of the gun. So take it with your little needle nose pliers, grab it just like that, and right where you stopped that sear pin, slide this in there. Once you get it basic lined up with the hole, you can push on the pin to hold it the rest of the way in. And then while pushing on the pin, wiggle it around a little bit to get it to line up. Or what I like to do is use a alignment pin from the opposite side to get it to line up. Once you get it to line up, that sear pin will push all the way through. Now, take your upper part of your Series 80 safety and in the frame there's a cutout right here on the right hand side as you're looking at it from the back on the right hand side and you can look at the shape of that and look at the shape of your Series 80 upper part and you'll see that they just fit together take that Series 80 part set it in there and just let it rest just like that Okay, if you need to replace just the strut without placing the whole hammer, which I'm not sure why you would, knocking that pin out is how you do that. But with the hammer facing forward, the easiest way to do this, take your hammer pin, have it handy. But with that Series 80 part in there, just rotate the gun on its side so that that piece stays where it needs to be. Make sure it doesn't fall out of there. Take the hammer, just slide it in the back of the gun with the connection pin on the hammer that holds the hammer strut in. It's going to be facing towards the back of the hammer, just in case you've got a different kind of hammer you're not sure. Once you get that in there, just look through here and line those holes up. You're lining it up with the forward hole. Take that hammer pin push it through. It should go all the way in. It'll go through the hammer and through that Series 80 piece. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the sear spring. Now on the sear spring, this claw goes to the left and faces in towards the front of the gun. This tab goes to the bottom and also faces in towards the bottom of the gun. That tab will fit into this slot right here. It'll wrap around the left side of the sear right there. Now the left leg of the sear. It needs to actually go it needs to actually go on top of that sear leg. So just rest it in there so that that claw sits on top of the sear leg and the tab at the bottom is in the slot on the bottom of the frame. You can see where it is on top of the sear leg there on the left side, right there. Next, we're going to put this plunger back in because that's going to hold in place the next pieces that go on there. When you're putting this in, you got a small side and a large side. The small side, it's got the little pointy taper on it, goes in first towards the front of the gun. Right in here. Slide that in, push it all the way until it comes out the end. So you've got both sides with a little metal piece sticking out. Okay, keep the hammer in the forward position. Get that started, the tab fitting into the grooves. Okay, use your finger, fit in that groove to keep it from sliding out. Take your grip safety and just drop it right inside there just like that so that the firing pin or so that the mainspring housing slides up against the bottom of it and so that that tail on your hammer fits into the tab, the groove on your mainspring housing so it'll go together just like that now to hold that together your mainspring housing pin drives through the bottom of your mainspring housing. Make sure the holes line up. And push that in.
That shouldn't take much to get it in. I just use a little plastic handle. But just make sure that that's in and fully seated. All right. The last thing to install is the thumb safety. In order to install this, hold all this and hold your grip safety in place. But the hammer has to be in the cocked position. Keep in mind that on your firing pin or on your thumb safety, when you buy this, this piece right here is going to need to be filed. This post will not fit around some of the internal parts. You need to file that. If you overfile that, you make it completely worthless. You need to file that until it just barely clears, which takes a lot of putting it in, filing it, or uh, putting it in, testing it, pulling it back out, and filing it some more. If that's not filed, when you pull it in and attempt to put the safety on, the safety won't go on. It'll it'll stop. So you need to pull it out, file a little bit more, and then keep putting it back in until it clears. But you want it to just barely clear. But that whole piece goes into this large hole. The post goes into this small back hole. When it goes in, it also, just like when you took it out, has to be between the on and off position. So get it started through this hole put it in there and what I like to do to make it easier is take a tiny little screwdriver and push this plunger right here this plunger that holds it in I push that in so it's out of the way and clear of the thumb safety while I push the thumb safety in and there you go once you get that in fully seated group safety will function you can actually test that without assembling anything further. With it in a safe position, trigger won't pull. Don't let it fall, but with it in the fire position and the grip safety released, the hammer will release. Reinstall your grips. Either wrap them around or put your plates back on. Install your screws, and your lower receiver is fully reassembled.